<clears throat> Go ahead. Welcome everyone to the December 29th meeting of the Minneapolis Bicycle Advisory Committee. Notice this meeting may involve the remote participation by members, either by telephone or other electronic means, due to the local public health emergency, novel coronavirus pandemic, pursuant to the provisions of Minnesota statute section 13D.021. Oh, welcome everybody to the last meeting of 2021. Uh, we have had quite a year. Um, we have quite a full agenda today, uh, including a number of items in discussion that I think are a very big deal. Um, so I will jump right in and have Millicent uh, call the attendance roll. <clears throat> okay, Aaron. Here. Abdi. Adrian. Arman, Bree, here. Awesome. Dan Booty, here. Ben Miller, here. Diana, here. Alyssa, here. Diana, Greg, Heather, here. Tyler, Janice, here, Jennifer, here, Missy, here, Zoe, all right, uh, Carl, here, Jordan, here, Cadence, here, Cadence. I'm here. Awesome. Here. Marty. Matthew Hendricks. Here. Maya. Natalie. Here. Philip. Oh, yeah, here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Robin. Here. Matthew Deardall. Here. And Millicent Flowers, I'm here. Anyone else attending who wishes to be added to the role for today? Also here, this is Chris. Hi, Chris. Okay, we have 21 present. Thank you, Millicent. I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as well as the minutes from uh, November. So moved, Dan Booty. I'll second that. That's there. This is Aaron. Any discussion? All right, Millicent, if you could call the roll. Thank you. Okay, Aaron. Aye. Me? Did you say Brie? Yes. Oh, abstain. Okay. Dan Booty? Hi. Hold on one second. <laughs> Dan Miller? Hi. Anna? Hi. Alyssa? Hi. Awesome. Uh, Heather? Heather? Aye. Okay. Janice. Janice. Oh, sorry. Yes, I, I didn't realize I muted myself. Okay. Jennifer. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Carl. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cadence. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Matthew Hendricks. Yes. Natalie. Aye. Philip. Aye. Robin. Aye. Dear doll. Here or yes. Okay, seventeen. Yes, and one abstention. Millicent, I just joined. This is Marty. Hi, Marty. 
I'll mark you down. Did you want to accept the minutes and the agenda? I do accept. Aye. Okay, great. That Thanks. is 22 here and 18 accepting. Great. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Bree and Heather for the 5E subcommittee report. It's all you, Heather, because I have not been around for a while. So thanks uh, for Heather uh, stepping no up when I had to take care of my dad who died. Thanks. Really good to see you, Bree. Just a quick update from our last 5E meeting. We had a pretty long but short agenda, a long meeting, short agenda, uh, covering mostly the CIP presentation uh, related to an overview and a discussion about equity in the CIP process, as well as a discussion about the regional solicitation applications. Um, the minutes are posted with the last meeting and I believe attached to this meeting's agenda as well. Uh, something to note though for our next BAC 5E meeting that's coming up on the 4th is that we will be spending that meeting time writing the resolution for our CAP recommendations for 2022. So before that meeting, you will receive some information, um, some of the things that were discussed in the last meeting, as well as a survey to complete before the meeting, uh, sharing some of your thoughts about what we should prioritize during the meeting uh, so that we can go ahead and build that agenda from that point. Uh, we're gonna be going ahead and doing that writing during the meeting so that we don't have to do quite as much of it there. So if you are free um, uh, for the meeting on the 4th, we would love to have your contributions there. Thanks. Any questions or comments for Heather on the 5E subcommittee report? All right, not seeing any hands. Uh, or anybody coming off mute. So with that, we can move on to the next item on our agenda, the engineering subcommittee report. That is Dan and Marty. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to do my best here. We had three presentations at the meeting and uh, there were there are three draft resolutions that were prepared uh, for each of those presentations. The uh, first presentation was Nicollet Avenue Bridge over the Minnehaha Creek. It's 30%, uh, so that's the last time we'll likely see that. Its uh, presenters were Forrest Hardy and Mesret Wulana and uh, Mark Mabes from SEH. Um, the project's going to uh, replace the bridge deck and uh, four beams. It's a pretty substantial redo of the street and uh, it will be replacing the uh, railings and uh, light poles, and they will be uh, preserving the history similar to what <clears throat> was done on uh, Franklin Avenue. It also has a combined uh, eight foot and six foot bike lanes on both sides, and they will be separated by, uh, uh, by raised concrete buffers, similar to what we've seen uh, around with the delineators on top. The project includes connecting to the existing sidewalks and bike facilities of both north and south of the bridge. And the anticipated reconstruction is slated for 23 or 24. The trail beneath the bridge will not be closed by construction and have overhead production. And uh, our discussion included bumping out the south side Minnehaha Northwest curb for increased safety and further review of bridge water runoff with Minneapolis Parks and Recreation. And we recommended a taller 1.5 to two foot crash barrier for the buffer between the drive and bike lanes. And with that, I, uh, I'll move to the resolution unless there's any questions that want to be asked before that. Okay, so uh, Millicent, are you going to put the resolution up or do I just read it off? There it is. Okay, so first resolution is the Nicollet Avenue Bridge over Minnehaha Creek, 
The Bicycle Advisory Committee supports the Nicollet Avenue bridge repair and renovation as presented and will include sidewalk level bike lanes, sidewalk level bike lanes on both sides of the bridge and concrete buffers with delineators separating them from motor vehicle traffic. We are also pleased that the bridge will be renovated with ornamental lighting and railings that preserve its historical features that the trail beneath the bridge will remain open during construction. The BAC asks that the project team consider bumping out the southwest corner of the mid intersection with Minnehaha Parkway to make for safer pedestrian and bicycle crossings and review stormwater runoff with MPRB to protect the Minnehaha Creek watershed below. Explore a taller 18 to 24 inch buffer that could serve as a crash barrier between the ped bike facilities and vehicle lanes. And lastly, continue to review safe and understand and user understandable transitions to the existing sidewalks and bike lanes on both bridge ends. So with that, uh, we'll need a second to, uh, do you want to take this over from here, Alyssa? No, I mean, say Marty. No, uh, it, it's fine with me. Okay, so do I hear a second on that resolution? Deanna, I'll second. second. Oh, okay. Oh, or Deanna. <laughs> okay, uh, discussion. Okay, um, I want to uh, just, I'll, I'll just add something before I forget it. Uh, these resolutions were done after the, uh, after the meeting and were sent out to the uh, people that attended the engineering uh, subcommittee meeting just to review and comment on. And I got several comments back that uh, I tried to incorporate into these resolutions. And I want to thank members for uh, doing a review and helping to make them a better resolution. So I'm not seeing any comments. Are we ready for a vote? I think we are. Millicent can call the roll. <clears throat> sure, Aaron. Aye. Bree. Aye. Dan Booty. Aye. Dan Miller. Aye. Anna. Aye. Heather. Aye. Janice. Did you say Janice? I did. Yes. You know, sometimes your voice fades out, Millicent. Okay. Jennifer? Uh, aye. Essie? Epstein. Carl, you want to vote? Aye. Sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> here, I'll get right on my laptop here. Jordan? Aye. Cadence? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Artie? Aye. Matthew Hendricks? Aye. Natalie? Aye. Philip? Aye. Robin? Aye. Matthew Deardall? Yes. Alyssa, how do you vote? I will abstain. Thanks, Melissa. Two abstentions and 18 votes, yes. Okay, so moving on to the second presentation was the Lowry Avenue Northeast reconstruction, 15% with Forrest Hardy of Minneapolis Public Works and Kelly Augusto of Hennepin County. So this is a two phased 1.5 mile reconstruction. The first phase is Johnson to Central beginning in 2023 and Central to Marshall in 2026. However, I think that may have been updated and if Jordan is on the air, maybe he can give me that. I saw on the presentation that it was 2024, so I'm not sure on that. Sorry, Dan, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, the conceptual design is proceeding on both phases right now. And uh, uh, Dan, so, yeah. this, Melissa, sorry to interrupt. I'm just verbally going to note that Cadence is stepping out of the meeting due to a conflict of interest. OK. We'll keep talking. Thanks. Great. So the first phase, Johnson to no, I'm sorry. The uh, so it's in two. Johnson to Central. I'm sorry. I I have my uh, my phases mixed up. It's actually um, Washington to Johnson, and uh, the second phase is Marshall to Washington. I got that goofed up in the the minutes there. Um, anyways, from However, from Johnson to Central, it is a, a proposed to have two drive lanes and a 10 foot shared use path on south side, sidewalk on north side, and boulevards on both sides. Uh, it's going to eliminate the, uh, the parking that is existing at the moment. Uh, from Central to Marshall, uh, they're proposing a four to three drive lane conversion with some locations having two drive lanes separated by a center median that uh, is now shown as being a uh, green space, which will provide a safety island, prevent left turns at, at uh, other intersections. Option, there are two options for this section and option one includes an eight foot shared use path on the south side and a sidewalk on the north side and boule boulevards on both sides. And the second option, has wider sidewalks and boulevards on both sides. Um, before I be go any farther in the agenda, I placed the uh, a link to the the this agenda, and uh, thanks to uh, Millicent and Matthew and Chris, uh, they've they've really worked very hard to be able to update that with the presentations that come before this committee. And if I'm moving too fast, you want to take a little deeper look at that stuff, you'll see a whole number of links on that through there. OK, I'm going on, on street parking is eliminated uh, on Lowry, Marshall to Johnson, the full 1.5 mile stretch. Pedestrian lighting will be added. Signalized intersections will be updated. The shared use path is shown with raised crossing at non-signalized intersections. MnDOT recommended the WB50 truck classification, which is roughly a container trailer size, to determine turning radii. A current MnDOT planning and environmental linkages PEL PEL study does not preclude that the four traffic lanes will be maintained in the future on both University and Central. Discussion and support were given to the road diet green space, shared use path with raised intersection crossings. Concern was raised about the hill between Johnson and Central is straight drive lane layout and widths which encourage unsafe speeds. So recommendations including exploring a north side shared use path to take advantage of the proposed large green space abutting the University Avenue intersection lower vehicular turning and increased sun exposure. That's a it's a smaller neighborhood to the north on that section between oh, University and Central. Explore ways to expand the proposed eight foot Marshall to Central shared use path to 10 feet. Add leading pedestrian intervals, LPIs, with upgraded signals, particularly at Marshall, Second, University, Monroe, Central, and Johnson. And add uh, rectangular rapid flash beacons at the 5th Street and Polk Street by Colbert intersections and at Pierce Street between Polk and Johnson, roughly a quarter mile in between. Review the shared use path going beneath the railroad pass on 18th Avenue Northeast between Monroe and Quincy as a possibility for beneath the Lowry Railroad overpass. Explore ways to increase the length of proposed medians to prevent left turns that can happen at nearby signaled intersections. Consider closing 7th Street Northeast access to Lowry. Explore possibilities to lower the 30 mile per hour speed limit and further drive lane design to dramatically lower motor, motor vehicle speeds. Explore bump outs on University and Central at the Lowry intersection for safe crossings. And uh, we drafted a resolution. So, Millicent, as we get that up on the board, uh, any questions that, uh, oh, I see some, somebody in the chat here. 
It's Janice. me, me. Um, Dan, the only thing I was going to ask is, you know, you say in the motion, well, I guess we're not talking about the motion yet, but we can, I, I guess I'll go ahead to the motion. Uh, you talk about we support layout one with the shared youth path. I was just wondering if we should emphasize that we don't support option two because option two had no bike lane. Okay. And I don't know if we should emphasize anything about uh, or say option two isn't, we didn't like option. I don't know if you want to say anything about option two. That's okay. all. All right. Uh, why don't we, when we read the, uh, the resolution, which is going to sound similar to uh, the notes, uh, we can take that up and think that through. And uh, okay, Jordan left a note there. Alrighty. So I, we'll, I also have a comment. Dan, okay. If I could. Yep. Um, you mentioned the RRFBs at the Bike Boulevard crossings and the Pierce Street one. Um, I heard from. Uh, one Minneapolis staff person that the Pierce Street Bike Boulevard might be moving to Fillmore. I wonder if Matthew, could you give any insights there and just um, just in terms of where uh, this committee might ask for those improvements, it would be good to uh, know if that bike boulevard's indeed going to move. All right. Um... I may need a minute on this one. Um, I am fairly confident that we what we're referring to is the President's Bike Boulevard north south, um, you know, connecting Stone Arch Bridge all the way up to 37th Street. Um, and I I believe um, we did move it a little bit um, in the uh, transportation action plan. But why don't we go to someone else and let me let me get prepared on this one. Does that sound good? That's Polk Street where that's at, not Pierce. Okay, so for the Lowry Avenue Northeast reconstruction, 15%. We're up on the screen. All right. The Bicycle Advisory Committee supports the project's preliminary layout one conceptual design that includes shared use path and raised crossings at non insignalized intersections from Marshall to Johnson Street. Four to three conversion for Lowry, Marshall to Central. Center medians, curb bump outs and jacons to increase traffic calming. Eliminating parking to create green space on boulevards and center medians. And pedestrian lighting. Uh, the BAC asks the project team to consider the following before the next BAC review and be indicated on a review's revised layout if applicable a north side shared use path to take advantage of the proposed large green space abutting the University Avenue intersection, potentially less north side neighborhood motor vehicle turning and increased sun exposure. Expand the Marshall to Central shared use path eight foot section to a continuous 10 foot shared use SUP. Show pedestrian and Bicycle pavement markings and wayfinding directing users to important crossings and intersecting bikeways. Review the shared use path beneath the railroad overpass on 18th Avenue Northeast between Monroe and Quincy as a possible solution for the SUP beneath the Lowry Railroad Pass overpass. Rectangular rapid flashing beacons, RRFB, at the 5th Street and Polk Street Bike Boulevard intersections and at Pier Street, which is halfway between Central and Johnson and roughly a quarter mile between. Leading pedestrian uh, intervals, LPIs, with upgraded signals, particularly at Marshall, Second University, Monroe, Central, and Johnson. Bump outs on University and Central intersections at Lowry to reduce width for pedestrian crossings. Increase the length of the proposed meetings to prevent left turns that can happen at nearby signal intersections. Close the 7th Street Northeast access to, to uh, Lowry for safety. Lower the 30 mile per hour speed limit to 25 miles per hour or less. Narrow the drive lane dimensions to encourage drivers to adhere to posted speed limits, increase awareness of walkers and rollers, and additional space in the ROW for more greening. Consider additional locations where more horizontal deflection can be used to discourage speeding similar to the newly 
constructed section of Plymouth Avenue North. So whew, that was a lot. Um, so with that, uh, I'm looking for a second to continue. I'd uh, second that, Sam. Second. Okay. And who seconded that? That was Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> All right. Just trying to help out and listen here. Uh, Matthew has his hand up. Okay, I'm prepared for a response. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had um, all the right information. So uh, currently the President's Bike Boulevard in the area um, is um, heading northbound on Fillmore and at uh, 22nd, it goes over to Taylor um, and then crosses Lowry there at Taylor. Um, oh. And I, in the transportation action plan, we, we kept it on Fillmore um, all the way up to 27th and then move it over. And I, I believe part of the reason for that was just to remove one jog um, in the system. Um, so as that relates to to this project, um, I, don't, I don't have a timeline on when we would do that. Um, it would probably be a, a part of a pretty big uh, neighborhood greenway project, but that could be, um, that is a factor that I think the project team uh, you know, Jordan should take into account. And we can talk about more. Uh, so in, in that case, I don't necessarily know that it's um, critical to specify that crossing in this resolution, if that's how you want to handle it. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, I was going to make that suggestion too, that it, okay. instead of saying the specific streets, just say the bike boulevard crossings. And the project manager, Kelly, um, I think also is, uh, should be aware of that potential move. Um, I think Forrest Hardy made her aware of that. So Good. That, that is happening on the, the project team for this. So um, Jordan, your recommendation would be underneath the point called Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, RRFBs, at uh, the 5th Street and Polk Street Bike Boulevard intersections uh, be replaced with, and maybe end at Pier Street, uh, be replaced with uh, at the Bike Boulevard intersection, what you're saying, just to scratch 5th uh, and Polk Street. Yeah, I think so. You could say just intersecting Bike Boulevard. Thanks. And then you you might also want to get rid of Pierce since it, if it is going to Fillmore, that is more mid mm. midway between those two intersect Johnson and Central. Okay. You want to get rid of all of this that's highlighted and just end at Bike Boulevard. Um, maybe keep intersections. Period. Yeah. And then delete the rest. And uh, Janice, you had a question about uh, uh, where to put layout to um, that. Well, uh, just if you think it's clear that we're just supporting one, I didn't know whether we should call out two and just say. Um, so we could put that perhaps as the bike the bicycle advisory committee supports the project's preliminary one conceptual design and not the conceptual layout two. Is that possible? Well, the first thing you say, the bike supports Fox, you already have pro, um, the first sentence says we support layout one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Elissa has a comment. Maybe we can think a little bit and let her chime in. Well, my comment's pretty straightforward. I was just going to recommend that a few of the abbreviations that don't have that aren't written now be adjusted. So in the second bullet below uh, where it says SUP, change that to shared use path. And then on the next page, I think there's ROW for right of way as well. What does SUP stand for again? Shared use path. Does it have to all be caps or shared capital U or just lowercase u? It could all be lowercase. What was the other one? On the next page where it says ROW for right of way. 
second to the last bullet. Oh, awesome. I see two SUPs. Where's that other one? Right here. Shared Review use. the shared use path. Start with a few. Yeah. And you see another no. one? Yeah, the one down below it, uh, two bullets down below it from that. Mm -hmm. I know I'm missing it. If they can tell me where it is. Nope. It's the eleventh uh, paragraph down from oh, the top. Four, two, three, four, five. Okay. okay. Here, you see where my cursor is? Should I go above or below that? Uh, hang on. I'm, I can't scroll down. Let's see. It's uh, anybody else? Expand the marshal to central shared use path, eight foot sections to a continuous 10 foot. No, you already got it. You got that. I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. <laughs> All right, Deanna. Yeah, I guess I wanted to go back to um, option two. Um, or preliminary layout too. Um, I do think that when if we don't if we simply say that we pref that we like support option the layout for one, we do kind of begs the question as to whether that's just our preferred um, one, and that we would maybe go ahead with option the layout for two. Um, and so I, yeah, BAC does not support preliminary option two. That would work for me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest uh, at the first first uh, item there the bicycle advisory committee supports the project's preliminary layout one conceptual design and not layout two and does not support layout two and uh, somehow figure out how to put that if that includes as a either get rid of it for the time being and just uh, or pro and then the second uh, pair sentence would be preliminary one layout includes uh, and then the dot points so well, we support the following we that'd be fine yeah Deanna, you have your nope. Oh, Deanna's hand is still up. Up, oh, down. Okay. So this is a pretty good sized project here. Uh, uh, this is in my ward that I represent, and uh, uh, we're very excited about it going in. So, Jordan, did I ask you the question about whether this is scheduled for 23 and 24, and that move from 23 and 26? Uh. You did say that. I just put what I found on the project website that the first phase is scheduled to begin in 23. I'm not sure if that's outdated or not, but that's what their project website is saying. That's yeah. Johnson to Washington. OK. Yeah, I was surprised at the 24 thing when I was looking at their virtual uh, layout today. and. Yeah. Sometimes it takes multiple years. That's kind of what this looks like. It will take several years to complete phase one. Right. Okay. Um, do we have any further questions or comments? If not, I'll ask for a vote. <clears throat> Aaron? Hi. Bree? Hi. Excuse me, <clears throat> Dan Booty. Aye. Dan Miller. 
Aye. Deanna? Aye. Heather? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Janice? Yes. Jennifer? Aye. Jesse? Abstain. Carl? Aye. Jordan? Abstain. Cadence can't, she's not here, right? This is the one she had to sit out of. Correct. Okay. Kyle? Aye. Marty? Aye. Matthew Hendricks? Aye. Natalie? Aye. Philip? Aye. Robin? Aye. Matthew Deardall? Yes. Alyssa? I will abstain. Awesome. We have 15 yes and three abstention. Okay, moving on to our last uh, project. Uh, it's 37th Avenue Northeast reconstruction. 30% uh, presenters are Forest Hardy, Forest Hardy, Minneapolis Public Works, Heather Keenitz, and Shane Garrity from SEH. So this is a one mile reconstruction from Central to Stinson Boulevard in Northeast Minneapolis, it's scheduled for a 2023 const reconstruction. Um, it's a partnership between Minneapolis and Columbia Heights. Parking is eliminated and replaced with new nine foot boulevards, a north side 10 foot shared use path, and two 11 plus two drive lanes and seven foot four center medians at five locations. There are two raised crossings are being evaluated by on the SUP at 37th place and Johnson Street intersections. Zebra crossings is proposed for at 37th place and Stinson Boulevard intersection in Columbia Heights. Uh, the dedicated 11 foot turn lanes at Central, Johnson and Stinson. Uh, the SUP is proposed to have colored surface across driveways. Surface material is undetermined and we wrote a resolution for it. So I think I'll just go to the resolution and then we'll open it up for questions here. 37th Avenue Northeast reconstruction 30%. We support the project's layout and presentation that includes new increased green space on boulevards, medians to accommodate safer pedestrian crossings at 37th Avenue and soften the straight nature of the drive lanes, a shared use path colored surface which continues across driveways uh, and pedestrian lighting. We ask that the following be reviewed and indicated on the project layout before full support is provided. Central dash line lane separation along the pedestrian bike symbols that signalized at signalized intersections along the shared used path. The eight non-signalized intersections along the shared used path have raised marked crossings or marked zebra crossings at the minimum. Wayfinding indicating distances to signalize signaled cross streets and bikeway connections. The five median crossings, including the Polk Street Bike Boulevard, have zebra crossings, pedestrian warning signs, and or rectangular flat rapid flashing beacons. The signalized intersections at Central, Johnson, and Stinson be upgraded with LPI leading pedestrian intervals and the speed limit be reduced to 25 miles per hour or less. So I'll uh, hear a second for that. I would second that, uh, Philip. Okay. And we're gonna open it up for discussion. This is a 30% review. So or a, a resolution on the uh, project at 30% and it's likely we'll not will not hear any more about this project so hence some of the details okay 
Okay. Here we go, Deanna. Yeah, I have a question about that, Dan. If they're not coming back to us, um, then the line that says that um, that we are requesting that they consider the following before we give them full support um, seems confusing. Um, are we saying that we're not supporting the project or? Uh, my indication was that I'd like to see some of these things addressed before we support the support the so, project. So should we be saying that we would like, I mean, I, I know we said it in the meeting and I know that the answer was kind of no, but you could ask again that that that, that we would like them to come back to us with a little bit more detail. I think that'd be appropriate in that second sentence if we can figure out how to put it in there. Or the second, uh, we ask that the following be reviewed and indicated on the project layout be full support before full support is provided and uh, that they share that information at a future meeting for a start at, the, at a future BAC meeting. Even if it's just a courtesy on their part, right? Yeah. Realize, you know, it takes time away from you know what they should be doing, but OK. Yeah. This is Alyssa. I'll just jump in with. Uh, yeah, that was what I was. Millicent already fixed it. Never mind. <laughs> there was a they in there and it wasn't clear who they was. All right, I'm not seeing any uh, comments here. Uh, if that's going to be the case, uh, I think we're ready to uh, take a vote. <clears throat> OK, Aaron. Aye. Bree. Aye. Dan Booty. Aye. Miller. Aye. Anna. Aye. Heather? Aye. Janice? Uh, yes. Jennifer? Aye. Jesse? Abstain. Carl? Aye. Jordan? Aye. Adams? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Party. Aye. D. Hendricks. Aye. Natalie. Aye. Philip. Aye. Robin. Aye. D. Deardall. Aye. You can abstain. Alyssa. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Abstain. Yes, thanks. Sorry. Two abstentions and 18, yes. You're on mute, Dan. Just sharing back to you, Alyssa. Thanks, Dan and Marty and all the folks who attended all the engineering subcommittee meetings. Uh, as always, that report is a lot of work, and I appreciate it. So. Um, we are moving on from reports to discussion, and I believe Matthew has a very quick update on the year-end review. Yes, so um, we do have a, an exciting and um, I think entertaining year-end review presentation, and I'll just note I, I failed to <laughs> get that to Millicent uh, to get posted, and so unfortunately I think we have to bump that back um, to next year. So hopefully we can, or maybe we can uh, build the suspense on that for the for the January full meeting. Um, so I apologize for, for that. Alyssa, back to you. Happens, happens to the best of us, thanks. All right. Uh, so we will look forward to that in January. Um, the next item is also you and I. Uh, you want to talk about 2022 appointments? You can kick us off, Matthew, and I'll jump in. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, with the executive committee, um, we thought it would be important to just have this on the agenda. 
Um, the, you know, as everyone knows, I believe uh, the bicycle advisory committee appointments are for two years. Um, and I believe it'll be roughly in March when the applications for the ward based appointments are are opened up. Um, and then I think probably do in, in April sometime in that time frame. But I think the main thing we wanted to note um, this time is um, that there's gonna be a lot of new council members um, and maybe I'll let Alyssa do you want to talk about that at all? Or sure, um, there are going to be a lot of new council members. We had an election <laughs> in November uh, and a lot of our uh, elected officials changed. Um, so if you are someone who is uh, appointed by a council member it, and your whether or not your council member has changed, it's all it's always great to have a good relationship with your council member to reach out with to them to make sure that they know who you are uh, to open the lines of communication. I know that there are some members who like regularly are in touch with their council member about projects that are happening within their ward. Um, but thinking about especially the reappointment process, right, it's really important uh, before those applications come open in March for everybody to have some sense of who your council member is um, and start building that relationship both so that you can be reappointed um, if that's something you're interested in, um, but also so that, you know, you can serve as a um, you know, subject matter expert to the best of your ability when your council member has questions about walking, biking, transportation projects in the board. So um, I think that's most of what I would have to say on that. I have nothing further to add. Just um, I think a good heads up to not wait until like the application deadline to, to reach out, um, especially I think for the new members that may just not know who you are yet, um, so that'd be good. And then I see a lot of hands popping up, I think. Um, why don't we start with, I think I saw Janice first, and then go Phil and Dan. Yeah, well, um, as you know, the park board um, appointments are a little out of phase, so they make them, I believe, at their January meeting. Um, do you know when, when the, does the term start immediately? Do you know when the, do you know when the terms start? I mean, I, I is think this going to be talking... my last meeting if I'm not reappointed? <laughs> Well, I, th I think in talking to Robin Garwood last time, and I'll, I'll use his judgment because he knows everything. Um, once they make their appointment, it's it, active. We don't need to wait for uh, city council to go through their formal process in June or May. Um, so I would say uh, pretty quickly after uh, the park board makes a decision. Now I'll say since it is sort of somewhat awkward in terms of timing, like we should definitely have the existing members if, if they're not reappointed at the next meeting so we can like have that you know proper transition but i'll i'll, I'll look forward to um connecting with the park board on that um and figure out more of those details robin do you have anything to add i saw you pop up okay uh phil and then dan Oh, yeah, thanks, Matthew. So my, my question would be, um, is it uh, you is it unusual for a new council member to uh, replace uh, a currently serving member who wants to continue or is it very mixed? Is it totally unpredictable? Do we anyone have a sense, historic sense? Like how hard a sell do I need to give to my new council member? Uh, so maybe that's a question for me. Um, in in the past, uh, folks have tended to want to keep people on. Um, that that's just sort of in general. Um, there has been a question often about like, has this person been participating? Do they show up? Are they active? Um, I kind of. Um, used to grease the skids a little bit for folks um, just you know approaching the new council members so like in 2018 going to I don't know Jeremy Schrader and saying so your current BAC rep is Paul Friends he comes all the time uh, he's he's active on the subcommittee you know what I mean like so um, yeah. someone I think because I'm not going to be around to do that it would be valuable if someone else would do that and I'm not sure exactly who is the appropriate person to play that role other than maybe staff um, trying to have some sort of a conversation maybe about the BAC and the PAC at the same time and just say 
courier reps they're showing up they you know are active in the following ways um so they can get it from somebody who might be perceived as being somewhat objective um i philip i i don't know what to expect um i mean i would i would hope that council members would be willing to reappoint people who are participating um it's it's good to have some level of continuity uh but it's entirely up to them sure okay yeah i mean i th i think with, with with robin i would yeah simply send an email and explain myself briefly and my interest and then offer offer to you know come down and chat further or share my thoughts and ask for her th her thoughts on the general topic i have no idea though whether um pbac topics are of a, her strongest interests i don't think so but i don't i don't know i'll do a little research first and then <laughs> approach her soon okay thanks dan yeah this is just a, a question about uh uh, I was figuring that about mid-January that uh, once the uh, the official emails come out uh, for new council members is the time to uh, just make an approach. I don't know if uh, you, Robin, or Alyssa have a different idea, but I thought that until then I really don't have a, an email to at least my new council member. And uh, um, any advice there? So they should all have email addresses by now. Um, ah. Maybe staff can help folks get access to them. Um, I would probably wait until after they're sworn in. Um, because, I mean, just in part, they're like swamped with stuff right now. Um, so maybe that, that week after that. Um, I don't think there's any reason that you need to wait any longer than that. Um, so... I mean, it's up to you, but. Uh, I agree with that. When is the swearing in is mid January, isn't it? No, it's January 2nd. Oh, OK. Third or something like that. Big third. It's it's the very first business day of January. OK, thank you. I, I was just wondering real quick, um, do we do a, do we meet with them via video or do, through a phone call? That will be entirely up to them. I, I I would, when sending an email to them, offer them you know whatever you're comfortable with, um, and see what works best for them. Thank you. If you, oh, the PAC works differently, doesn't it, Matthew? In terms of the, Correct. so never never mind the what yeah. I was talking about before. Yeah, all at large so on the PAC. All right. Anything else on this topic? I have one kind of related thing, but just, you know, as folks are thinking about, right, building their relationships with their council member in order to maybe be reappointed, uh, there may be some of you who choose not to be reappointed, who choose not to reapply to the two-year commitment that is the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, and certainly a fair amount of folks who apply to the Bicycle Advisory Committee um, are find out that we exist via referral. Um, so, you know, as soon as you know, if you've decided that, you know, another two years of service is not your jam, <laughs> um, if you could let executive committee know, um, so me, Matthew, Phil, Dan, um, Heather, Bree, Marty, any of those folks, um, so that we can, you know, start to be thinking about who do we want to be recruiting to those seats. Certainly there are some seats every year that get multiple applicants and then some seats that we struggle to fill. Um, and so, you know, the more notice we have about that, the better. So certainly I would love it if all of you reapplied and all of you were reappointed. And also I know it is a big two year commitment and that just might not be where everybody is after two years in a pandemic. So uh, Dan Miller, I see you have your hand up. Did you have one more thing to add? Nope. <laughs> Putting it down. <laughs> Great. Um, Anything else on 2022 appointments? Matthew Deardall, you're good? Okay. 
Um, the last item is simultaneously the best item on the agenda and the worst item on the agenda. <laughs> it is honoring Robin Garwood. Um, everyone, I think, uh, has, there's, we're all going to have a lot to say about Robin. I don't know uh, how long we want this meeting to go. Um, but Robin has done an incredible service for the city through the Bicep Advisory Committee. Not only that, but all the other ways that Robin uh, has shown up to make Minneapolis a better place. And so wanted to take some time to honor those contributions. I don't know how Robin feels about being the center of attention today for a while, um, but it's going to happen. So, um, you know, I think Robin, you have, since I joined the Bicycle Advisory Committee, which was the first time I met you, um, there are people who talk a lot and have nothing to say, and there are people who only speak when they have something really important to say. Um, and you have always been a person who is really thoughtful, who is really strategic, who is unafraid of doing the right thing, who is incredibly smart and only chimes in when you feel like you really do have something to say and it's really important. And um, I just really appreciate you. I think that there are lots of folks in the world who get into public service uh, because they, for reasons I don't appreciate it, uh, because they like red tape and uh, consolidation of power. <laughs> um, but I feel like the way that you show up to public service makes public service something really to aspire to. So um, thank you for everything that you've done. You will be missed. Um, I don't know if we have a formal way. I'm sure that I know, I know at least one, several folks have emailed about wanting to share some remarks, but um, I don't know, Robin, if you would like a chance to say something at the beginning or at the end. We're kind of playing it a little bit by ear. Oh, I'll talk after. <laughs> okay. Um, so, folks, if you would like to say something to Robin, uh, feel free to put your hand up. And with that, I will hand it over to Matthew Hendricks, who has already done that. Hi, so I didn't know if I would be able to be at this meeting or not. I thought I would probably be traveling. So I wrote uh, remarks thinking someone else would read them and uh, I was able to be here. So I get to read the remarks that I wrote. Um, and I apologize for reading them, but it, if I didn't have something to read, I'd probably talk for half an hour. So that's the positive. Um, it's hard to accurately describe Robin's tenure on the BAC without missing important things. Uh, so I'm going to highlight some accomplishments with the understanding that this uh, is a very partial list and so much more could be said. Um, first, the BAC in its current form exists because of Robin. Uh, there was a pre-BAC BAC, and that long ago version was informal. It had no written agendas, no minutes, no membership list, no subcommittees, and no formal line of communication to elected officials or public works leadership. Good work did get done, uh, but at a certain point, it was clear that the energy of the group was not well served by its lack of structure. When the idea of formalizing the BAC into a more organized structure was raised, the BAC structure that we now take for granted sounded radical and revolutionary at the time, and the change was not initially embraced by public works staff. Uh, forming the BAC as it is today took months of discussion with public works and elected officials, and it only happened because of Robin's strategic conversations with colleagues on the third floor of City Hall. Robin possesses a rare combination of vision and tactical thinking that has made him an invaluable leader. Robin has been described as Ward 2's extra council member because he's able to envision a better future and plan and execute the steps necessary to get there. So we are all here because of Robin. But even more importantly, Robin didn't rest on his laurels after the BAC was formalized. As the city council's representative on the BAC 2.0, Robin has been one of the most consistent, outspoken, and effective advocates for safety that this committee has known. Discussing projects one, two, or five years before they're built, it's easy to lose sight of the impacts these discussions have. In his tenure on the BAC, Robin has been a key voice in making dozens of projects better for bicyclists and safer for everyone. Robin's presence on the BAC has improved and saved lives, and the infrastructure he has impacted will continue to shape Minneapolis for decades into the future. It's easy to gloss over a concept like, the infrastructure that Robin impacted has saved lives. No one throws a party for a car crash that didn't happen. There isn't a national holiday for the heart attacks avoided and the diabetes deaths prevented because people felt comfortable walking and biking in their neighborhood. The tragic crashes we prevent are a nebulous concept. 
They're easy to imagine in the abstract, but impossible to pinpoint or count. The many people whose lives are improved by Robin's work, therefore, won't necessarily know Robin. Or even if they do know Robin, because he is a tireless participant in hundreds of community meetings and discussions with constituents every year, they still may not know that they're benefiting from Robin's work. Maybe I'm one of the people who would have been hit by a car if not for a bike lane or a street closure that Robin advocated for. Or maybe it's one of my family members who is spared. So speaking on behalf of myself and also for the countless people who will benefit from your work, thank you, Robin, for the fact that you have quite possibly saved my life. Thank you for a Franklin Bridge design that is second to none. Thank you for safing, safer biking routes around the U of M. Thank you for your involvement in making Franklin Avenue, Riverside Avenue, 24th Street, 29th Avenue, and many other streets much safer than they were before your tenure on the BAC. Thank you for dramatically advancing the policy conversation around biking to a place that we would barely have recognized 14 years ago. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, and I wish you all the best in the next chapters of your career, and I hope you'll be back to visit us soon. Wow. Rich, very rich, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, well, Rob and I, I wrote a few, uh, a note in this uh, electronic card that we sent you. I, I think I would, I would simply add that what stands out for, for me is having worked with many, many city council aides across the state of Minnesota, I have never, never seen a, um, a council aide just work so well collaboratively uh, with their council member. Um, and I feel like I've known you forever because I've known Cam since he was a teacher of my children at Seward Montessori. Uh, um, so um, your sort of uh, arrival um, on the scene has just been so uh, rich and wonderful. And uh, certainly the two of you have just, again, the, the uh, wonderful relationship between the two of you and how it has so been so impactful is, um, is, a, is a rare thing in my experience. So I, uh, hats off to you, hats off to you. And I'll, I'll see you as you bike down my, <laughs> my street. Matthew Hendricks, I think you set the bar real high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Wasn't my intention. <laughs> is there anything else to say? <laughs> Well, I guess I'll just speak to, to second everything Matthew said. Um, um, I arrived at the BSC uh, because of the new because of the 2.0 structure that uh, Robin helped um, put together. So I don't really uh, I can't speak to what it was like before, but I can say when in the times when we haven't had a chair, Robin's been our chair. Uh, so he's been our sort of silent chair um, and been on the board, the, uh, the executive board the whole time he's been on the BAC. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I just, I hope that we get, uh, a new council member, uh, <laughs> member that's just part, half as good as Robin. <laughs> anyway, thanks Robin for all your service. Jordan, do you want to jump in? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'll just say Robin. You know, first of all, nobody can wordsmith a resolution quite like you. So um, it's going to be tough going forward. Someone needs to step up. Um, and then, uh, you know, just to pre kind of same as everyone else has said, you know, really appreciate your presence here on this committee. And, you know, in particular, I um, help facilitate our Hennepin County Active Transportation Committee, you know, kind of similar role that Matthew has. And so just, you know, hearing the things that you have to say and your insights has been um, really impactful for me as as I'm trying to, you know, develop that committee to be more um, effective in their work. So, you know, really um, appreciate just kind of learning from you and and this whole committee as well. Um, and kind of taking that back to our Hennepin County Committee. So thanks, Robin. I'll go. Um, it, it is hard to figure out what what you know best feature that you have to to highlight, but 
Matthew Hendricks said said one that I think is so important, which is strategic. And I think you have one of the most strategic minds in in the you know transportation uh, world that I've ever encountered. And so I really appreciate that. And then also, I just want to thank you personally. You've helped me in my job so much, like all the conversations that we've had and what I've learned from you, um, just observing. So I, I just appreciate you so much. So thanks, Robin. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Robin, for uh, for your efforts. And I, I can't uh, I agree with everything that uh, that uh, Alyssa has mentioned. And I think that uh, I learned a lot from what Matthew has said. So I just uh, wish you the best going forward. I hope to uh, that we can stay in each other's lives and I can continue to learn and uh, uh, be better and uh, be smarter and uh, be more informed. So uh, thank you, Robin. Jenny Borden, you're up. Yeah, I just want to echo everybody's thank you. Um, and it it really, for me personally, was an amazing thing to watch you work at the BAC. And it was I gave a, gave a sports analogy, but maybe it was like dancing. So thank you. One thing I forgot to say, which I will also add is like public service as a job has gotten harder. It has gotten worse. People are more uh, informed and also way more intense about things. And so I appreciate all the things that you've done over the last many years. And also, I'm uh, glad that you get a break. I don't know that you've really gotten a break for a really long time. Um, and so I hope you're able to take that break and uh, do something for yourself <laughs> and not just the public. I don't remember how to raise my hand <laughs> since I haven't been on Microsoft meetings in so long. But um, I just want to say a big thank you to Robin. Um, and you 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 on the agenda item got me to this meeting probably a month earlier than expected <laughs> so gonna miss you Aaron go ahead hey, I, don't, I don't have anything super profound to say but I'm, I wanted to thank you Robin um and just kind of mention um, there were a few people before I got onto the Bicycle Advisory Committee that I had seen posting on Twitter, I had seen stories from streetsmen, etc. kind of the all-stars of transportation in Minneapolis. And I know you were one of those people that I was just kind of excited to partner with or learn from or whatever, so thank you for that. I don't want to cut anybody off, but I am getting more and more uncomfortable with time here. So <laughs> I might I might jump in and try to nip it in the bud. Um, so I, j just a, a, a couple of things. Thank you for all of the kind words. I really do appreciate it. Um, I wanted to tell a little story about where the BAC came from because I just think it's kind of funny and fun. So here's where the BAC came from. Back in, I don't even remember exactly when it was, but it might have been 2008 or 9. Phyllis Kahn attempted to put forward an Idaho stop bill at the state legislature. And uh, when word got around that that was happening, Betsy Hodges, who was then the, the city council member for Ward 13, tried to put something on the city of Minneapolis's legislative agenda to oppose that bill. Um, so I went into the BAC, which Matthew Hendricks was absolutely right. It was just a sort of an ad hoc pocket committee that was chaired by Don Flum in Public Works. Didn't really have an agenda. People just kind of showed up every month and it was like, 
what is there to talk about? Well, there are these kinds of like four projects maybe. So I just packed the meeting. I just got a bunch of people that I know would be on my side of this particular question to go to the meeting to, to have the BAC pass a formal resolution opposing the city taking an action against the Idaho stop bill. And, uh, and it was one of those things, it was like that trick that you can only use once. It was like, we can't keep doing this. This is crazy. This is not a way to, to have a, an advisory committee. I shouldn't have been able to do that. I shouldn't have been able to like call up 10 friends and say, hey, you're on the BAC today. Come on down, we're gonna win this vote. So um, that was part of what planted the seed for me, um, just to try to have it be like a real thing. And I had been to some of the other advisory boards and commissions and I had seen like the that they were formally appointed and things like that. So I had some idea that we that we could have more of a formal process. I do want to say so I, I remember being in in City Hall conference rooms with I think Matthew and definitely like Ethan Foley and Lisa Bender and um, Bob Hain, Hokan, um, trying to design the new thing. And I think we all went into that thinking this could be a lot better than it is. It could be it could be a, you know, a real improvement. I don't think any of us had any idea that it could be as good as it has proven to be. It's really one of the most functional, most powerful, uh, most influential, most highly regarded of the advisory boards and commissions. Um, you especially with the pedestrian advisory committee like really do improve things and change things you're doing powerful real work here and and i i appreciated matthew uh, hendrix what what you said about like the stuff that we do here can seem like indirect it is indirect you know we're having a conversation and we're passing a motion about a thing that might someday turn into concrete and, and, and asphalt and plastic that looks different than it does today that will change people's behaviors in a particular way. But then it does get translated down into like literal concrete stuff in our city that changes how it feels, how it operates, how safe it is and for whom. And it really matters. Um, and I, I'm struck by it oftentimes when when we you know when i'm just riding around so like this new third avenue bridge that connects the west bank to the east bank how dramatically better it is than the the bridge that was there when i started this job in 2006 which was a four lane death road with no bike infrastructure on it at all with a sidewalk on only one side you know crazy stuff that they used to build <laughs> like just just insanity and and with our work that we've done here uh we we we've changed that into a two-lane road with a protected bikeway with sidewalks on both sides that's going to be safe and pleasant for everybody who's on it and it it's a really big difference and it's and it and it matters it matters in people's lives so i just want to thank you all for the work that you're continuing to do um it has been one of the really fun parts of my job to be able to be uh, the council's rep to the BAC and and to, and to help you all. Um, I do want to just sort of Philip mentioned Cam, and I just want to. I, I don't feel like you all know Cam very well. You know, it's like you've seen him maybe on the dais. Some of you, maybe some of you haven't seen him at all. Um, he and I had uh, a pretty. I think Philip is right. Unique relationship where where I said I just want to be the bike guy and he said go ahead you you should go do that and and I think um I have been very lucky to be empowered in that way for all of this time to just sort of chase stuff that um that I was interested in and thought thought I could uh, make a difference um and I I just wanted to say one other thing in closing which is like this government thing kind of doesn't work all that well a lot of the time. Um, and it mostly doesn't work all that well when it doesn't because it's just really hard. 
it's just really hard taking a big diverse group of people who have things that they really disagree about strongly um, and don't really talk to each other and get them to agree on something. And when it works well, when it works best, in my experience, is when elected officials and city staff get to work with groups of people who are like I, I think of it as being it's unfortunately it's an automotive um analogy no it doesn't have to be so it's a it's a like you all are the legs that that power a bicycle you're the you're where the power comes from and changing things out in the actual world that's the wheels rolling and in order for the thing to work there has to be this complicated stuff in the middle of like a gear and a chain and another gear and some and some you know shifters here and there uh to get that power to to be reflected in the actual like forward movement and so that's that's the piece that i feel like i've gotten to play is that little that little bit of chain sometimes and you all are the power and i really appreciate you um doing that work and being that power out in the world. And I hope you can find new effective chains. There, I bicyclized it. <laughs> I love the lyrical, uh, the lyrical analogy, Robin. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Robin, do you know what you're gonna do next? I do. I, so I have had a long time dream to do a very long canoe trip. And so I am going to do the entire Mississippi River from the headwaters at Itasca to beyond New Orleans uh, in a solo canoe starting in something like May ish uh, with my Brompton and the bike trailer for the boat so that when I get to a place that I want to see Memphis or St. Louis or whatever else I can get the whole rig out and, and go up into the city. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my big plan. Something like three months, they say, on the river. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm dehydrating food and making menu items and I'm gonna be trying stuff. Oh, and I, and I will be uh, sort of documenting it as I go. Uh, so I'll put my my personal email and also my my website in the uh, chat so that you can follow me if you're interested. I'm sure that I'll try to like put some of it on social media too here and there. So if you're a Twitter person, you'll be able to see it there. Well, that sounds like a great next step. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Alyssa, the 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 break and the relief. You're absolutely right about all of that and this sounds really nice well and hopefully we will be able to maybe meet up at a social bike ride when the weather's a little warmer before you go you'd be up for that or when i'm back in town you know okay. when i when i'm when i when i because i have to come through the twin cities in order to get right. past you right. um yeah cool well, if we were in an in-person meeting, uh, this would be the point at which we would adjourn and go to a bar somewhere and continue to say nice things about Robin and make him very uncomfortable. Uh, but we are not in an in-person. We are doing a virtual meeting. Um, does anyone have any any last words? I, I, it feels very strange to me that we'll come back in January and Robin won't be at the meeting. That feels really weird to imagine. Um, but I'm glad we all got a chance to come together and thank Robin for what has been an incredible tenure of service. I don't know if we have enough words to thank you for all the things you've done. I see Jesse's hand is up. Yeah, um, one thing, um, actually I have two things. Uh, one, um, for, for just for folks information, um, the Minnesota Department of Transportation Metro District, which I am a part of, has a new um, bicycle and pedestrian coordinator um, he used to work for the city. It's uh, Mike, <clears throat> Mike Samuelson. 
And so if you see um, him around at all, just um, wave wave to him if you see him. Um, Second thing, um, I am on the conference planning committee for the um, uh, Association of Pedestrian and Bicycle Professionals. That conference will be, I think it's in October. Um, and as part of that um, conference planning committee, I'll I'll eventually um, be looking for folks to help um, lead uh, mobile tours and also um, session ideas. Um, I know that um, it'd be great to get the um, BAC and PAC's participation um, within that conference and I can give more details when when time gets closer and when other details are kind of um, being shared. Um, also, uh, uh, Matthew, um, uh, I'll probably want to uh, con connect with you to get um, some city involvement in the conference as well. Um, but I think um, as was mentioned um, by Robin, uh, I think the BAC has had uh, and PAC have had some great impact, and I think there'd be some um, pretty cool sessions of um, maybe a few BAC members um, together to be able to share that knowledge with other cities around um, uh, the US. And so um, uh, just be looking out for that. Cool. Um, in terms of other announcements, I'll just announce that I am uh, very behind on planning. We had mentioned on our last call some sort of in-person celebration for Robin and due to some logistical capacity things, uh, but that's still in the works. Please be on the lookout for an email about that at some point in the future <laughs> before May when Robin leaves. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, yeah, so I uh, there's a couple announcements that I um have one one of note for folks who use the parkways for biking i'm on the cedar isles um community advise master plan community advisory committee and they just released the draft concepts um and one that'll particularly be um dredging up some negative opinions is uh, an idea to remove one lane of car traffic for a section of cedar lake parkway in order to add space for cyclists and pedestrians. Um, I imagine there's going to be an extreme amount of pushback on that. And so the, the meeting, the next meeting is um, January 11th, Tuesday, January 11th. Um, I think it's immediately following our engineering committee meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if anyone has some time to spare to show up and um, there will be a lot of neighbors of the parkway and things like that who will show up to be against it. So if you're for pedestrians and cyclists and the space to keep everybody safe, um, please uh, take a look at that master plan draft concept and show up in support. Um, the other the other thing that I've, I've been noticing and maybe Matthew or somebody could speak to this, but the uh, the new, so we're on the Blaisdell Whittier or Whittier Lindale bikeway on Blaisdell, where they just finished paving the new, some new sections between 32nd and Lake Street. Um, for whatever reason, have been closed and unplowed. And uh, I've been part of a text chain over the holidays around that, but I'm, I, I'm kind of confused about that, but it's something if, if anyone knows anything about it, I would definitely um, be interested in learning more because um, it's kind of a it was exciting to see that it was paved before the snow came in and then now the snow's there and it's not going anywhere. I'll, I'll maybe say a, a little about that. Um, there, there's been some challenges with rolling rolling that section out on Blaisdell between 28th and 32nd, um, particularly the the features of it that would indicate that it's two way and and so there there are some folks in in Public Works um, wrestling with that sort of currently, um, and so I think it's closed because of that. Um, maybe I'll be able to to say more when I know more, uh, but yeah, it's a it was a a rolling out of the construction uh, issue, I would say. So, mm -hmm. do you do you see like a that they could just plow it as it would have been if the bikeway hadn't been paved? Sorry, can you say that again? 
Is, is there a way that it could have just been could just be plowed as though if it had never been paved to be two way? That's a good question. Um, I, I don't I don't have an answer to that. Okay. No, I didn't I didn't mean to put you on the spot either. Okay. For this. I just realized my announcement had no um, no actual um, action item. So, no, that's OK. Um, I'm glad but yeah, that. if I yeah. can talk to you more through email or something about it, but I'd okay. be curious. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, we talk to, uh, tomorrow if you want. I, I'm free most of the day. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And then I'll just make a note that perhaps Cedar Lake of the Isles master plan would be a good thing for a subcommittee agenda next month. Thanks, Alyssa. Other announcements? All right. Uh, shockingly, we are finishing this meeting early, I guess. H happy end to 2021. I give you a half hour of your time back. Uh, I will call our meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody, um, for coming uh, in this interim week where a lot of people are on break or vacation of some kind. Um, I know kids are off school, so that's a little bit of an extra thing. And I um, appreciate you all for being here. And um, yeah, Robin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss you. I hope we'll, we'll still see you around. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Farewell, Robin. Thank you all. See you. Bye. Thanks, Robin.